Welcome to Woman On. I'm your host, Maxie McCoy, and this season, we're talking to women and people making 2020 actually somewhat inspiring. This isn't just another show. We know you don't need another one of those. This is a place where you can do more, where you can have worksheets for every episode. You can come together with small groups and your own leader to figure out how you apply the wisdom that you're listening to to your own life. It's a little slice of heaven on the internet that I think you're going to love. You can find out more at womanoncollective.com. My next guest is boundaries breaking champion of the LGBTQ plus community and a leader in body neutrality. No idea what body neutrality is. Don't you worry. I didn't know either, but you're going to find out and you are going to be changed because this concept, it's something that applies to so much more than just body image. Bethany Myers talked with us about so many things that are going to push you to think differently. But this wasn't my first time talking with Bethany. As you'll hear in the episode, we go pretty far back. In 2010, Bethany was a Pilates instructor in Dallas. I was the assistant manager at a Lululemon, and that's where our paths crossed because they were one of our ambassadors and we'd chat in store and we'd chat in classes. And as you'll see, Bethany leaves an impression on you that is impossible to forget. What I didn't realize until the conversation that you're about to hear is that our lives came together at a time where we were very much both just figuring it out. We were preoccupied with our bodies and and food really ruled the day. It's pretty weird for me, actually, to think back to that chapter of my life where I last knew Bethany because it feels like looking back on a completely different woman than I am today. I was obsessed with fitting into other people's molds. I was obsessed with figuring out what would make me successful. And I was majorly struggling with disordered eating. And it's probably no surprise, I was wildly lost. There is something beautiful in that when I reflect back, because in almost a decade since we were last in the same room, Bethany has gone on to do incredible work, founding the Become Project, which gives weekly consistent workouts focused on body neutrality and healthy movements. They are dismantling beauty standards and binary thinking in every move they make. I hope this conversation pushes you to do the same, to not live your life divided between this and that, and instead to find the places that you can exercise compassion and flexibility because, as Bethany puts it, it's hard to break something that bends, and 2020 has pushed more than some of us to our breaking points. Enjoy this conversation with Bethany Myers. Your life as it has blossomed is living in so many different dimensions just beyond the binary, and You're doing that in your marriage, you're doing that in your sexuality and your gender, and you're doing that in our relationship to our bodies. So can you tell me about where body neutrality came from? Black women are the people who have been Mm. leading body positivity and body neutrality. So I actually first heard about it. I was doing um, an interview with somebody and I started writing about body positivity and they were like, hey, you know, we kind of want to go from this more body neutrality point of view. And when I first heard the word, I got really mad and I felt very angry at the idea because the idea of like being neutral about my body and not having to love my body, I was like, that's so wrong. You know, like I, of course I have to love my body. And then I started like reading about it and really thinking about it. And I was like, oh, this is actually, this is incredible because what it does is it takes the focus away from the body. I think that like a line that I really resonate with that I said um, was some days I love my body and some days I hate my body, but every day I respect my body. And I think having that shift and like the pressure taken off of having to love or like having to really focus on the body and just being like, this is what it is, you know, um, was incredibly freeing. You know, 
the past six months have been so hard on so many people for a million reasons that no one needs to outline here. But I'm curious if you've experienced in your own way, um, because this has been just such an abrupt and intense shift, a lack of compassion, how you were able to get yourself out of it. Quarantine has been, you know, it's been difficult for everyone. I found a lot of struggles over quarantine. And what happened for me, I think, is a little bit different than what happened for some other people. Because I think for a lot of people, food really became a point of comfort. And like, I think, I mean, I talk about this a lot, but I think for a lot of people, it was very important to gain some weight over quarantine. Like, I think that people needed a little extra cushion and a little extra protection. And our body... Uh, adapts to its surroundings, you know, and it knows what's going on. And when we're scared or we have trauma, I do think that we hold weight because we need it. For me, I started to really revert back to like a much younger self where like all the food that I wanted was uh, childhood, mm. you know, like cinnamon toast crunch and the grand cinnamon rolls, a lot of cinnamon that my mom used to make and and like things that, I mean, I think are totally fine to eat. I don't have good foods or bad foods, but in my true self, like that's not how I like to eat every single day. You know, I wanted more fresh things and I just didn't have much of an appetite. I found myself wanting to not eat, really wanting to skip meals. That's old eating disorder Stop. behavior, right? Coming mm-hmm. from past. I was doing a lot of body checks in the mirror. Um, a lot Just of like- look, Does that mean looking, looking, touching, yeah. looking? Yeah, so like yeah. body checks, um, a lot of like mirror evaluation of your body, pinching mm-hmm. at your stomach, looking at your legs, pulling your skin around in different ways, right? Like these are kind of nuances that often happen and not necessarily eating disorder, but an overall disordered eating, which totally. I think most of us probably have, have, you know? <laughs> have, have moved on from hundred <laughs> percent. I, I remember when I learned, cause I felt like, like I'm not actually succeeding at an eating disorder any longer. So why do I feel so crazy? And when I had that language for disordered thinking, disordered eating, I was like, Oh, Right. This makes so much sense. This there is, it is exactly what this yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. So um, I started doing all these things and I realized that it was a, it was a way of protecting myself, right? Like I think eating disorders, disordered eating can kind of be described as this like blanket that makes you feel good and makes you feel safe and makes you feel in control. Um, and then after a while that blanket starts to suffocate you and it becomes almost like this, you know, web that you can't get out of. So I definitely, you know, I'm really honest about my journey. I don't think I've arrived anywhere. I think I'm certainly figuring it out and figuring it out with other people, but I really had to, um, and I'm still having to, you know, think about it. I did some therapy, like some specialized therapy. That's what I was going to ask you is what did you, when you saw yourself, um, not to say reverting, but just engaging in old patterns, you obviously had the awareness to be able to do something about it. So what did you do? What did you do? Yeah. So one of my best friends since college, it's funny how our life paths have developed because she's kind of always been a person like she was there during eating disorder, Bethany, you know, yeah. really, really at it. Um, and she was always this person that was kind of there by my side and like a good voice in my ear. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's actually now a holistic nutritionist. She, you know, and the all glow her, up. Yes. It's yeah. So, it's so incredible. We've done <laughs> workshops together. Um, oh. She's all based within intuitive eating and health at every size. So I actually scheduled sessions with her innate nutritionist. If anyone is interested, yeah. what's her um, name? Whitney Hall Benson. Benson. And Instagram okay. is innate nutritionist. Um, and she, and that was super helpful to have some conversations. So like one of the things that we did was um, like, instead of saying this or that, right. I'm mm-hmm. either going to have like, the cheese quesadilla or the kale salad, can you start to think about this and that? So Mm. can you like chop up some kale and put it in your quesadilla and like enjoy those two things simultaneously? 
which is like a revolutionary idea, right? <laughs> it's not, it, but it is. The things that are life changing seem so when in hindsight, so simple. I was thinking of this when, uh, you know, in, in your TEDx talk, you're talking about your eating disorder and your history with that. And then choosing to just not be a number on the scale by throwing your scale out, by choosing to work out, not for how it's going to change your body, but how it's going to make you feel that day. And I, I was just like, yes, because why someone didn't tell me to throw out my scale a decade before I did it, it was so profound and changing my life around these things that in hindsight, they see, seem so simple, but I'm curious for you in that, in the throwing the scale out piece or choosing to work out from a place of how you, the energy that you want that day. Do you remember the moment where you just said like, I'm done. Like I actually, me as a human, Bethany, and more than these, these numbers. I remember a time period yeah. um, of like saying, okay, I have to change this. You know, I don't want to do this anymore. Like I specifically remember there was a poem or something that I found or wrote. I've tried to find it. I don't I'm know. I'm sure you wrote it. <laughs> I, I, think I, like, I think it was like mantra templates and it yeah. was like, I am fill in the blank or, you know, whatever it was. Lo love a good worksheet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're anything like me, you love listening to inspiring stories, but then there always is this little letdown at the end of a show because it's sort of like, well, now what? How do I put anything into action that I've just heard? Well, at Woman On, we're here to solve that. Each episode comes with a free worksheet that you can download to get dirty with all the wisdom and put it in your own life. Just go to womanoncollective.com backslash worksheet. <laughs> and I remember memorizing it, which I don't know it anymore, but it really served me well during that time. And I also remember thinking like, this is so cheesy because I feel like everybody like, say this in the mirror to yourself every day. Um, but did you? I would say it on my walks. Yeah. yeah and I, I would definitely say it every single day. I think I kind of did it in my own way, but it, it really did help me. It helped me to start. There was a lot, I know there was a lot of language about kind of reframing the way that I thought about my body. I was not aware of body neutrality at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that it actually did have kind of a body neutral, like, you know, so overall kind of lens that positive reinforcement definitely helped, but I certainly remember the time because it was sort of in between. Um, I, I left corporate fitness, mm -hmm. but I was still an instructor in the studio. And that was like when I, you know, the lead up to starting become, but it was like, once mm -hmm. I left that corporate fitness, I was like, what am I going to do with this extra time? Yeah. And that extra time was kind of just spent on like figuring out me and everything shifted at that, started to shift at that point. In that moment. Yeah. And the become project is, it is so beautiful. It is just such a, I feel like when I did it and I was dancing around in my underwear, um, you know, on, on what is it? Old country road, <laughs> old town road. I know I'm going to get that wrong. Day two, we were. <laughs> yes. Yes. We were probably doing it in tandem. It was pretty early here in San Francisco. And I was like, wow, I just, I'm having so much fun. This is the most connected that I felt to my body in in a, in a while, because we're sitting in front of computers and we're being like, I should work out or I should cook something or I should whatever. And it's actually like, this is actually just so beautiful and, and fun. How did you know that that kind of repetition, that kind of um, movement was going to be the thing that could light up neut body neutrality in people? And I loved assessing myself, how I felt before and after. It was awesome. I was like, yeah, I'm here for this. <laughs> oh my God. I, I love that. And I love this question. Uh, how do I answer it without getting like too nerdy? When I start thinking about- Please the nerd out. I'm such a big nerd. Just you know, I mean, sit here with me. Instructing, I find it to be an art form. And I 
love thinking about the way people respond to movement and how people grow mm-hmm. onto movement and how to create routines that are not just hard, but that are effective, right? I think there's a really big difference between those two. Um, and I genuinely believe that I was put on this earth to teach. Like I love, love, love. Teaching. You're so good at it. Like I remember <laughs> being in your class a decade ago and I'm like, I just, it's been hard for me to do Pilates since because I want Bethany's <laughs> class. <laughs> Um, so one of the things I started noticing in my studio teaching, I started like getting really into making what I would call routines, right? Where there's like, it connects with music and there's eight counts and there's sort of this repetition. And I found with my clients that every single time I taught the same routine to them, they've already done, um, they started to really grab on to new things. And I think that this is like a little bit counterintuitive to fitness because sometimes people are like, I have to do this and this and this and this and this routine and kind of like all of these Always has to be different and innovative and new and exciting. Right. And like when you think about how we learn as humans, right, we learn by repetition. Like when you're learning a new language, you you say manzana, manzana over and over and over again. (laughs) And um when we are learning to walk, right? Like you practice, practice, practice. So I, I found that this sort of repeating the routine can start to, it allows you to see progress in a short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And we're usually judging our progress by the scale or by inches or by like a 12 week program or a 30 day challenge. And again, that takes the focus away from like our strength and who we are and how we feel. So and the idea of, progress, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so the idea of the become project every week, I put out a new 25 minute routine and the idea is that you do that routine all week long, mm-hmm. uh, and you watch yourself get better at it. And so maybe day and one I'm setting like, the goal. Yes. <laughs> and tracks my goal for me. I was like, I was, I was very modest. I said two this week since it was already Thursday. <laughs> I always say two. Two is like my go-to oh, number. see, I knew. We were there together this morning, <laughs> so for were, sure. So were. Um, so yeah, I think that that kind of, that focus on the routine itself and, and kind of on this transition and movement, yeah. it just starts to take the focus away from other things. Yeah. And then of course, like as an instructor, right? I, the instructor is the biggest piece that is going to inject how you feel about your body. And I have a hard time when I go to a class and it's like, go lower, don't drop, push harder. Like the fact is usually when you go lower, you're doing it wrong. Wrong. Like you'll feel it in the wrong places. And your back is thrown out. Congratulations on going lower. Right. Um, So having an instructor that can reinforce some of these ideas of taking care of your body, right? Like providing alternatives. Today I was talking about this. I think like uh, modifications, I call them Mm -hmm. alternatives. Love. People often say, oh, that's a way to make the exercise easier. And it's not. It's a way to make, it's an easier way to make you feel the exercise in the right, right place, right? Right. So technically you make it harder because now you feel it where you're supposed to feel it. Like modifications, alternatives are one of the best things you can possibly do, especially when you're wanting to strengthen and learn your body. So yeah. I highly encourage those. I do tutorials every week to answer people's questions, you know. (laughs) Yeah, it's, it also, you know, kind of what you said about it being your art form. You can just tell when you're watching you that, that the movement is an art, but it's also, it's the language that you're bringing, even just in, you know, the difference between modification and alternative, you know, as a writer, as someone who is obsessed with words like language informs so much of how we understand something, even something like body neutrality, right? Like, oh, I have a, I have a word now for what I, for what I want this to be. It just, uh, I, I loved getting to hear you say things other than like, oh, we're going into sweater season. So we don't need to worry about, you know, like that crap that people say in, in classes, which I know that, um, yeah, so much of, of what you give in the Become Project is um, is really a place of of support to just be. And yeah. hi, Become. I didn't even do that on purpose. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I did, but I didn't. Um, so, okay. When you did the routine, this might be a silly question, but when you did the routine this morning, like you mentioned, 
Do you watch the video or do you just do it from memory? I do a solid mix of all. Okay. So every week I do the video, yeah. um, at least once, like every Monday I started out because it gets me on the same page as yeah, with everybody. everyone, right? Yeah. We're all doing the same movement, which is one of the most yeah. incredible things about it. You're like, huh. Yeah. We're, we're globally connected. Exactly. Yeah. In, a play, in a time when we're quite just, you know, it's yep. hard to connect. Very separate. Um, so uh, I do that, but then I'm always working on new routines. So like, mm. for example, next week we're filming. So right now I'm like doing the routines that I'm doing for filming Testing. and creating yeah. new routines. So it's kind of jumping around a lot, but I definitely do work out to myself. And it's funny because when I'm working out to myself, I say cues and I'll find that I'll be like, oh, I hope I say turn out the knee here. And then the next line <laughs> is like, turn out your knee. Like, it's always this. I'm like, oh, I should it's be reminded there. for this. And then you know, like, that's wow, it's really, really cute. <laughs> yeah, that's really cute. It's um, I just imagine, you know, as you're talking about shooting and and, you know, you're on camera so much and you're also you're very visible. You're very, um, you know, whether it's your followers or it's press or it's paparazzi, I, I can't help but wonder if that proves and gives you its own challenges in, in a space of, of body neutrality. Is it hard to manage all of these eyeballs, thoughts, feedback on you while also staying true to your just your truth of, of staying in the middle, in the middle and just respecting versus absorbing what everybody has to say. Yeah, it's yes. (laughs) Um, I would relate it a little bit less to body neutrality, but I have a hard time. I have a really difficult time with negative comments. I mean, I like in the last six months, I've been like, am I deleting my Instagram forever? Like, can I just, can I just get rid of it and not have to deal with any of this? Or do I want to do that? I mean, where do, where do you nut out Bethany? Because I am one millionth of the experience that you are experiencing. And I just want to throw it away every second day of the week. And then I'm like, but am I putting negativity around all of this? And it's something that allows me to connect yeah, I mean, I I definitely don't have an answer. I think it's really <laughs> tough. <laughs> Oddly enough, Same so I, I did a reel that was like talking about body hair and it got on to some sort of discover page. For whatever mm-hmm. reason, the body it, hair was it really popped. Goes somewhere. This was about body hair not defining gender. Amazing. And yep. so it got out there and I got a I got a huge influx of followers mm-hmm. off of it, which sometimes I like and sometimes I don't like. And then it also got a ton of hate comments. I mean, like the kind of shit that's like, you're what? Um, And somehow getting more made it easier. Mm, That's interesting. Because it wasn't like waking up. Personal sort of. Yeah. Right. And this one comment where you were like, this person just came and attacked it. Like it was just all of this stuff. And it sort of helps me be like, this is, this is just how some people are, you know, and I can't really hold space for it. So I think I've been working. I think what's been helping is working on detaching Mm -hmm. from Instagram in a way where I can be like, this is what I share. And then I can turn it off. Or like, if I don't post for a week, it doesn't matter. It's fine. I can turn off all of my notifications and not check it at all. I think telling myself that I don't have to respond to DMs. I don't have to check DMs, right? Like it's basically people being able to text you any constantly. Yeah. And, and having that permission to just like, it doesn't make you a crappy person because you didn't get back to all 1500 DMs in a month. Right. Right. Or day. (laughs) So, you know, I mean, you do what you got to do and then, and then you just keep going. I mean, I'm very connected on become all those yeah. messages get read and sent to, yeah. and, you know, yeah. but I think that creating they're part of your, they're is- part of your community. Like it's, it's attracted. Yeah. It's attracted that, that energy, but I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, I, I mean, I, I just, I think it's a really tough, uh, yeah. it's certainly a tough thing. It's a fascinating. It's a fascinating world to be a part of. It's, isn't it? it, it I really think it is. And I also know that, you know, there's, 
there's a um, there's the benefits there. Not only connecting with people who may have never heard about the Become Project or would have never heard about you and your message and and all of the good that you bring. There's that. There's also real ways to make money, which I know that you have you have awesome brand partnerships that you've that you've been a part of. And I know that you talked a bit about when you specifically on since we're on the arm hair um, armpit hair topic, you were talking about how you know, you were worried that brand dollars potentially at one point when you started growing it out, wouldn't, wouldn't come in. And you saw that, you know, that kind of depression in not in you, but the depressive state of, of interest of it kind of lowering. And then obviously Nike comes through. Why, why do people give a fuck? Like why, why do brands care? Yeah. I mean, that's an interesting point. You know, I, I definitely think Well, now, I mean, I will say that with brands and my Instagram, I say no to a lot of things. Yeah, I imagine. Um, It's not like my number one. However, Instagram did give me the Become Project. I started everything only through Instagram. Only through my personal Instagram. I didn't have a website. Was that when you were doing the routines like on your kitchen counter and <laughs> when, I loved those. <laughs> so we did like a beta project basically. Okay. This was two years ago and I wanted to start become, I didn't know how I filmed mm-hmm. four routines. Um, I sold them through my Instagram. I was like, you can buy a month. And cool. then I basically yeah. I loaded them to Vimeo. I compressed them. I loaded them to Vimeo. Like you taught yourself all of this. I entered every single email by hand. Like, oh, you know, bless you. But yeah. those three months of selling these videos made a hundred thousand dollars, and that was the only way that I was able to build the build initial the platform and website. I didn't have any money to start a business, right. like nothing. Right. So that oh was. Oh my crazy. gosh, I I just love that so much, <laughs> and I when I really like I I so appreciate you saying like I didn't know how. Because now when you look at it, and if you were to sign in, or even just if you look at the Become Project website, it's like, this looks insane, amazing. And also it started from a place of, I didn't know how I'm manually entering emails and I'm putting stuff up on Instagram. Like, and in two years you're here. I know in our next version, we are working oh, on can some you tell really us? cool stuff. I can't even say it all, but we'll have a okay. new website coming and then we're working on phase two of the become project and it's the new features are going to be incredible. We're going to have another more accessible price point as well as a scholarship fund. And it's going to be be amazing. I love, I love, I love that is very exciting. And here's what I want to know about that. As you look at these last two years, right? You're starting on Instagram in one place. You are now in a phase two of you know, being able to give to a community with a scholarship program, being able to, to essentially blow this out, which is fucking awesome. Um, who were the people in that journey? Were there humans, best friends, partners, like who were the people that were really filling your bucket in allowing you to believe that you could get here? Yeah. So, I mean, there's lots of people. I mean, uh, the one person I'm going to shout out the most here is Alexa, who is the COO of Become. Mm. And uh, Alexa originally came to me for privates when I like quit my job. And I was like, I want to start this thing, quit my job. I need privates because I have no money. Yeah. Um, so she first came to me there. And then basically she was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I, ca- I have this idea for like this app. I want these routines, like this whole thing. And she was like, well, let me pretend to be your publicist for a little bit. So that way we can start kind of building your Instagram, whatever. So she like sort of was my faux manager. And then she was there as I started to talk about this. And then slowly, you know, we ended up where we are now. And I will say that like putting out there what you want, like even like I need somebody to help with X, even if you don't know what it is, like talking about the thing that you want is really, really important because um, the world listens <laughs> and, you know, without getting like too hippy dippy with it, it really is. It comes back. It, and it is such a law of attraction. I mean, I always say you can't, you can't get your solutions unless you're willing to hand over your problems. They, like you have to be open Amazing. about them. Yes, yeah. totally. Yeah. And she is, um, like the other half of my brain that I was not born with. <laughs> like, she can do things that I cannot do. She touches the number stuff that I cannot touch. Like 
<laughs> I learned very early on, if you're not good at it, don't do it. Don't uh, do it. It's, it's such a waste of time. Do what you have to do, but then like find people who are good at it and then focus on what you're great at. And so she was definitely the person that like saw, believed yeah. in it and, and grew with it. And yeah. not that other people in my life didn't like, I have an no, incredible spouse. I have. Yeah, there's the core people. I mean, you yeah. met Lisa earlier. Like sometimes you meet those people who believe in what you're seeing and everything goes faster. I yeah. totally, I totally get that. One of the one of the things that you shared on Instagram that has really stayed with me was and and was a very um moving read for me when you put it out was about the person who DM'd you about the old post, <sighs> an old photo. And as someone who has been writing. I've been blogging on the internet since 2012. I mean, Bethany, there are blog posts on, on my site, on my domain right now that are uh, titled what a cinnamon roll can teach you about life. Like total bullshit. So far from where I'm at right now. And I, I don't, I don't delete them because to me, it's an evolution of who I am and where I've grown from. And the fact that I showed up when no one besides my mother was fucking reading it. And so for you, you know, when you received that, how do you think about the censorship of self and, and why you're choosing not to do it? I think the, the image, so everyone knows that I'm referencing was, you know, I think it was a photo of you in New York. You were in a sports bra, had done some workout classes, some clean eating that week. And I think it was a photo of your abs. Um, and you were, you were commenting on, yeah, I was like, eh. Um, what it, look what basically look what, this look what not eating for a week will do. Yeah, like, like that's right. Basically what the post was, and so you know, what did you? What did you? Were you tempted to go like delete it now that people are pulling up old shit, or how did you take yourself through that? Yeah. So the person sent me a message that was basically like, how do you look back on posts like this? And it was like, loving. They weren't like targeting yes. you, right? But when I yeah. read that first message, I thought, right? Like, you know, sometimes you tend to up with Instagram, yep. like, you're like, oh, I think this is going to be bad. And then right away they went on to write, thank you so much for keeping this on yeah. here. It was really amazing to see, you know, your journey into where you are now. I clicked on the post and it was like a major, major rush of emotions. When I wrote that Instagram post, I remember wanting to be able to write captions with my voice so people could listen to yeah. how truly- Is someone listening? Somebody give us that feature. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't even know that words can, I don't know how to describe the words that were like, this was this ultimate kind of rush of wow and being taken back to that point. And I was just so unhappy, so starved. So I basically, during that picture, like in the detox I'm talking about, I cut out all of my These friends. These are really important. Yes. You I, cut out all of your friends. Yes. I was in such a bad place that I was like, I need to disappear from everyone. I told my girlfriend at the time, I told my friend, I was like, I am, I'm taking a social detox. Like I cannot talk to anyone. And this, Why? like, I mean, I, I would imagine what I think that is, is like the extreme need to feel like you can just start over. Like, mm. um, like I'm Phoenix just, rising I'm, sort I'm of, I'm going to yeah. bury that away. And then that's done. And I'm going to take two weeks. And I'm going to come out and be this whole brand new person. Yeah. Um, and you know, we don't work that way, but I used to think that we did the same way I could be like, I'm going to, uh, only eat this little bit of food every single day for a week. And then my body will be perfect and I'll be happy. Yeah. You know, um, it was just a really, really sad time. It makes me sad to even think that I would have to go there or do that. And, um, you know, with deleting on Instagram, I'm not. I'm not really the type of person to like go back and look at stuff. So I know yeah. that I'm not sitting in like 2014 being like, what did I post? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, whatever I did it at some point, like I, I've gone back a few times and like have seen a few, like really, really morbid, like anorexia jokes from back in the day that maybe I've archived, but I think for yeah. the most part it's there. Yeah. And I also think it's very important. Like, I don't like to hide the piece of my story that tell that is like, I was the person that I now preach against, right? Like 
I was the fitness instructor, diet, culture. Like I was laced in all of those things. I still taught a great class. Like you were there yeah. for it. Like, I, I love, so yeah. Instructor. And you, you brought so much goodness to everyone that you came to, even, even, even in the midst of your own darkness and your own, right. you know, your personal struggles. Right. But you know, like, okay, I was a teacher trainer for years. I definitely remember training instructors and using the example joke of like bikini season, totally. like, uh, like, what was it? A, a one piece is nice, but a sarong is so wrong or like something like some crazy shit. I remember I'm laughing just not, it's not obviously not funny. It's just so different than where you are now, but right. like we all come from somewhere. Right. Exactly. And I think that those things teach us. And and for me, it's even more powerful because I do know what both sides are like, right? Like I very much understand what it feels like to live in those ideologies and to believe in them and to need them Mm -hmm. in order to like be okay. Mm -hmm. Right. To have control over something, to be able to control your body. Like it's, um, I love that I have both angles now. I yeah. think it's helpful. Well, it's, a, it, it's what allows you to serve. It makes me think about, you know, about when we last saw each other in person was probably the depths of feeling lost for me. And then on the other side of a decade, I have a book called You're Not Lost. And I talk about, you know, the avenue, not only mine, but everyone else's of, of getting out of that. But I can only do it because I felt it so intimately. Um, and I also want to talk about you feeling lost. Um, so another thing that we like to do is to bring up some old photos. Oh, fun. And have you give a little (laughs) bit, have you give a little bit of advice to yourself, whether they were feeling lost or they were feeling awkward or unsure. Tell us about this, Bethany. (laughs) <laughs> Where was this person? First of all, that's me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so can we talk about, I had to do a multiple double take <laughs> because also you seem a little bit like a, um, like you have multiple children, you're on a yacht. Um, I am so, so you're like a billionaire that. person, you know, <laughs> none of that Tanner is fake. I have Spanish oh in, my. My, oh in my. my line so I can get quite dark. Yes. Um, what were you feeling at that point in your life? And I'm just curious the advice you would give to this person now. Yeah. So um, I was 19. I was raised uh, very, very religious, super, super strict, like, like kind of footloose, like wasn't allowed to dance mm. sort of vibe. And um, I had kind of, I was, you know, past 18, gotten out, been a year in college. I drank, I had sex, I had a fake ID. Um, I was, when I look back now, right, I do feel, I was like, wow, I was so lost and I was getting reckless. Um, I got a DUI. I mean, I just did like all of the things. All the teenager, like revolt things. Right. And, um, And I think about that person and how much I didn't know, right? Like at that time, I had no idea of my queerness. But Mm -hmm. on that trip, I was with, you know, my best friend who like looking back now is very clearly in love with, you know? And you're like, that was my, one of my first loves, right? It's like, oh, that's why I wanted to follow her everywhere, you know? (laughs) Um, And so... Yeah, I it's always interesting giving advice to your past self because I have no regrets, right? I think like the way that we are shaped is amazing. So somewhere along the line, Bethany figured it out. Yeah. Um, but I would probably tell myself just to like take a breath before making yeah. some decisions. Um, but that time and that trip always makes me smile because when I look at that person, I'm like, you had no idea where life would take you. Like I didn't, I would have never thought at that time that I would have short hair, would be having they, them pronouns, would be living in New York City, would be doing all these things that I'm doing. It wasn't Mm -hmm. okay for that person. And um, yeah, so it makes me, that one always makes me happy to see. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I have, I have one more. And I think, you know, what you're hitting on is, 
is so beautiful because I feel the same way sometimes when I see, when it's like, oh, what advice would you give to your 19 year old self? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe nothing because if she didn't do all the things that, that she did, I wouldn't be who I am. And so, it, you know, it's kind of toggling that. So I, I hear you on just like, like, take a breath. This is, this is another one. This is you and your partner, Nico. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me about this and the advice that you would give to that, Bethany? Yes. Okay. I'm going to get really real here for a moment. I thought that this, I thought you asking us to pick pictures before was a really amazing exercise Um, and kind of like, what were you feeling at that time? So that photo was the first time and like the main time that I can ever really say that I was depressed. And I, I, I guess there's been two now there's probably been two like main, main times, right? But that was one of them. And at the time, Nico was dating other people. And I was, I was dating exclusively women. Like I would have told you that I was a lesbian at that time. And I guess in a lot of ways, I still do identify with that oddly enough. But I, um, (laughs) I felt like Nico and I had finalized our relationship. And I know a lot of people out there don't know our relationship, but we've been best friends and kind of in and out and everything in between. And we're now married and um, just married to my best friend and an open and poly relationship. So I, at that time, I just thought, this is it. We're done. That night was really, really tough for me. And I just I don't know. It felt like there was potentially something that was final there. And I think that that photo is so interesting because of course now we're married and, um, you know, we'll be starting a family and it's Mm -hmm. like, you never know what life is going to be, you know, I'm not even sure like what the advice or what the punch is to that story, but it's just a time that I, I kind of look at bittersweet. It was such an important yeah. moment, I think, for us to have. Yeah, it's, um, it reminds me actually of something that you said, which is you can't break something that bends. That bends yeah. And you were talking about Nico and I, I, you know, where I read it. And I just thought it was such a beautiful sentiment for so much of life. And, you know, because depression, depressive episodes. It's, it's like, we're having a a break. Like we can't actually handle, you know, um, just what's going on in our head. And I think that, you know, I don't know, it it seems like maybe that was a step into the willingness to bend in life. Yeah. Yeah. I I think it highlights like that time period highlighted for us, what it would look like to just genuinely be like, friends you know yeah. and um and did you did you hate that idea yeah I think that actually was <laughs> yeah. a big piece of the depression yeah. and then I think Nico you know realized and then we had this moment where we were like okay but the, but we have something right like this actually is something yeah. um and it's sort of yeah may, maybe it's like when it when you're about to lose it you realize how important it is to have, have to hold on you know yeah but it yeah. was it was definitely um a pivotal piece for us yeah it's um you have that pivotal piece has taken you to where you are now and I want to read for everybody what you have on your bio queer poly married non-binary they them if that scares you I'll help it not <laughs> it's perfect And what is it about your life or the way that you live your life outside of, outside of binary that does scare people? Like, why do you even have to acknowledge, obviously you're acknowledging it because it does scare some, but what is it? Is it just that it's confusing for people? It's that it's not in a box, you know? I mean, humans, we like to put, we have a lot to absorb in a day. And Mm -hmm. so our brains there are studies that show that we genuinely like things in boxes because it helps us make sense of the world. Yeah. So we want to know if somebody is a boy or a girl or if, or if they cheer for this team or that team or they live here or there. It helps us to organize people. Yeah. And I think a lot of times people are very scared of things that they don't know. And a lot of people don't know what non-binary or what a polyamorous relationship could look like. Those things sound scary. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, 
I'm from the Midwest. I was raised in a very conservative family. I love them very much. I I think that I have kind of a duality there where it's Mm -hmm. like, I get what it's like to feel scared of gay people because I used to feel very, very scared of them. I thought that they were all sinners who had been cursed because they had fallen so deeply into sin. Their punishment was being gay. It was literally what I was taught, you know? And now I proudly identify as a gay person. Yeah. So I so I truly believe that there's always room for growth. And I think that when we can um, when we can receive information in gentle ways, at least for me, um, it can help us maybe get to a new point. And so that's something that I always try to do anyway. <laughs> yeah. And just the, um, you do it so beautifully. You make everything seem so clear and simple. And when I was thinking about, um, you and your journey, I'm like, do you feel like I feel that it's this way, but I don't want to project, um, <laughs> that it's because you're living your truth. So therefore it just, it is like, it is what it, it, it is your life. It is your truth. You're evolving. Yeah. I mean, I think that that a statement reads true for a lot of people, you know? Um, yes. The answer is yes. Yeah. I mean, the more that you get to be yourself, the better it feels. And I really encourage people to take a close eye to social media and the people that they follow And if you're following, you know, look for the genuine pieces and look for the realness. And anybody who's telling you that they're feeling good 100% of the time, they're not, you know, (laughs) Um, look for people who are giving a lot of advice. um, Who are serving you. you. It's very important. Yeah, watch who you follow. I (laughs) think that's, it's a beautiful way to um, wrap up. We have a couple just quick questions before we end. Um, I don't want to end this conversation. I want to sit here with you. I know this is such a great talk. It's so good to get to connect. I know. I know. And to do it for everyone else. (laughs) We get to serve while we connect. I feel like we're FaceTiming with an old friend. I know. (laughs) I know. Um, So, okay. Tell me this. Finish the sentence for me. I'm batshit grateful for Um, my puppies, my spouse, and having an upstate house during COVID. Yes. Yes. Very, very I'm, cool. I'm happy about that for you. Okay. Tell us who inspires you, Bethany, um, as, and, and inspires you in the way that they are working to move women and marginalized people forward. So who's the human that woman on our team should have on our radar? Uh, I mean, this is on everybody's radar, but AOC is just like blaring in my head. She's amazing. She's crushing it. She's the real deal. Love her. Yeah. Uh, talk about living your truth, like, and speaking it. My God. Um, okay. Last, last but not least, we want to support you. The woman on community wants to support you. How can we best do that right now? Um, uh, let's see if you Just love give the, us the whole project, <laughs> tell people about the become project. That's super, super helpful. I mean, at the end of the day, our business is investor free. We've never taken a penny. Every single thing that we've made has been from selling routines and that's what goes back into building it. Turns out it's very hard to have a tech company without an investor. Yeah. Um, and so we also haven't done You're any doing marketing. It. Yes. And we yeah. haven't done any marketing or advertising yet. So like word of mouth, talking with your friends, spreading even the message of body neutrality, right? Because that's the ultimate mission. Yeah. Um, you know, nothing, nothing helps more than that. And vote. Vote, <laughs> vote, <laughs> vote, 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 uh, Bethany, thank you so much. Thank you. So and congratulations. Um, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of us. Yeah, uh, Dallas too. really produced some good. We you did know? It. Yeah, we did it. We did it. Because that's not really how it works. Can you hear my dogs right now? Just barking at deer. It's quarantine life. It's like, you know, I've hit this plant five different times, so it's fine. (laughs) I'm really feeling all of the things today. It's just been, 
it has been a day it feels and also this is this is so like it's just real it is what is going on love what you're hearing well you get to really dive in by joining the 10-week collective where you'll be put into small groups that meet every week for the entire season led by one of our brilliant women on leaders they're so brilliant you're going to love them we break down the episode themes together every week we discuss we learn from each other it's seriously so fun and there's some super cozy merch that's exclusive to the collective that's the woman on world we hope we really hope that you'll join